This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Annie Coleman in St. Louis, Missouri, in April 2006. The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. Chapter 30 when they got aboard, the king went for me and shook me by the collar, and says, "'Trying to give us the slip, was ye, you pup? Tired of our company, hey?' I says, "'No, your majesty, we weren't. Please don't, your majesty.' "'Quick, then, and tell us what was your idea, or I'll shake the insides out of you.' "'Honest, I'll tell you everything, just as it happened, your majesty.' "'The man that had a hold to me was very good to me.' and kept saying he had a boy about as big as me that died last year, and he was sorry to see a boy in such a dangerous fix. When they was all took by surprise by finding the gold, and made a rush for the coffin, he lets go of me and whispers, Heal it now, or they'll hang ye sure. And I lit out. It didn't seem no good for me to stay. I couldn't do nothing, and I didn't want to be hung if I could get away. So I never stopped running till I found the canoe, and when I got here I told Jim to hurry or they'd catch me and hang me yet, and I said I was afeard you and the Duke wasn't alive now, and I was awful sorry, and so was Jim, and was awful glad when we see you coming. You may ask Jim if I didn't. Jim said it was so, and the king told him to shut up, and said, Oh, yes, it's mighty likely and shook me up again, and said he reckoned he'd drowned me. But the duke says, Let go the boy, you old idiot. Would you a done any different? Did you inquire around for him when you got loose? I don't remember it. So the king let go of me, and begun to cuss that town and everybody in it. But the duke says, You better a blame sight give yourself a good cussin, for you're the one that's entitled to it most. You hain't done a thing from the start that had any sense in it, except coming out so cool and cheeky with that imaginary blue arrow mark. That was bright. It was right down bully, and it was the thing that saved us. For if it hadn't been for that, they'd a jailed us till them Englishmen's baggage came. And then, the penitentiary, you bet. But that trick took em to the graveyard. And the gold done us a still bigger kindness. For if the excited fools hadn't let go all holts and made that rush to get a look, we'd a slept in our cravats tonight. Cravats warranted to wear, too, longer than we'd need em. They was still a minute, thinking. Then the king says, kind of absent minded like, Mph! And we reckon the niggers stole it. That made me squirm. Yes, said the duke, kinder slow and deliberate and sarcastic. We did. After about a half a minute, the king draws out. Least ways I did. The duke says the same way. On the contrary, I did. The king kind of ruffles up and says, Look a here, Bilgewater. What are you referring to? The Duke says, pretty brisk, When it comes to that, maybe you let me ask, What was you referring to? Shucks, says the King, very sarcastic, But I don't know, maybe you was asleep and didn't know what you was about. The Duke bristles up now and says, Oh, let up on this cussed nonsense. Do you take me for a blame fool? Don't you reckon I know who hid that money in that coffin? Yes, sir, I know you do know, because you done it yourself. It's a lie. And the duke went for him. The king sings out, Take your hands off, leg of my throat. I take it all back. The duke says, Well, you just own up first that you did hide that money there. Intended to give me the slip one of these days, and come back and dig it up and have it all to yourself. Wait just a minute, Duke. 
Answer me this one question, honest and fair. If you didn't put the money there, say it and I'll believe you and take back everything I said. You old scoundrel, I didn't, and you know I didn't. There, now. Well, then, I believe you. But answer me only just this one more. Now don't get mad. Didn't you have it in your mind to hook the money and hide it? The duke never said nothing for a little bit. Then he says, Well, I don't care if I did. I didn't do it anyway. But you not only had it in mind to do it, but you done it. I wished I'd never die if I'd done it, duke, and that's honest. I won't say I weren't going to do it because I was, but you, I mean, somebody got in ahead of me. It's a lie. You done it, and you got to say you done it, or... The king began to gurgle, and then he gasps out, Nuff! I own up! I was very glad to hear him say that, and it made me feel much more easier than what I was feeling before. So the duke took his hands off and says, If you ever deny it again, I'll drown you. It's well for you to sit there and blubber like a baby. It's fitting for you, after the way you've acted. I never see such an old ostrich for wanting to gobble everything. And I a trustin' you all the time, like you was my own father. You ought to been ashamed of yourself, to stand by and hear it saddled on to a lot of poor niggers, and you never say a word for em. It makes me feel ridiculous to think I was soft enough to believe that rubbish. Cuss you, I can see now why you was so anxious to make up the deficit. You wanted to get what money I'd got out of the nun such, and one thing or another, and scoop it all. The king says, timid and still a snuffling, Why, Duke, it was you that said make up the deficit. It weren't me. Dry up. I don't want to hear no more out of you, says the duke. And now you see what you got by it. They've got all their own money back, and all of ourn, but a shekel or two besides. Go on to bed, and don't you deficit me no more deficits, long as you live. So the king sneaked into the wigwam, and took to his bottle for comfort, and before long the duke tackled his bottle, and so in about half an hour. They was as thick as thieves again, and the tighter they got, the lovin'er they got, and went to snoring in each other's arms. They both got powerful mellow, but I noticed the king didn't get mellow enough to forget to remember to not deny about hiding the money bag again. That made me feel easy and satisfied. Of course, when they got to snoring, we had a long gabble, and I told Jim everything. End of chapter 30